Hi, my name is David Buer, Product Manager at Leviton Manufacturing. Today we're talking about the Piccolo Scans console. Now we're going to talk about recording cues. Cues, like submasters, if you've watched that video, are simply recorded memories. However, unlike submasters, which are intended to be played back from the masters on the console, cues are intended to be play, played back from either the auto fader pair or the auto crossfaders that we have here, or they can be back, played back from one of the masters when it's a cue is assigned to it. So the differences between masters and cues, masters are assigned to handles for manual playback, cues are part of a cue list that are generally played back in an automated fashion. In addition, when you record cues, assigning attributes to those cues is critical, like fade times, delay times, wait times, as well as macros can also be assigned to cues. To record a cue, you're first going to set up the channels or the automated device attributes that you want to record. For purposes of this conversation, we're going to just simply make a cue uh, of channels. We're going to set channel 10 at full, uh, 8 at 50 percent, uh, 3, 4, and 5 at full, and maybe we'll just put 10 over here at about, or excuse me, 12 at about 10 percent. We're going to call this the very first cue of the show. Now, like most actions in the console, there are shortcut methods and long methods to recording cues. I'm going to show you the short one first. Uh, to record a cue, all you have to do is simply press the record button. That's going to record the next cue in the cue stack. Now, how do you know which cue it's going to record? Well, if you look at the top of the monitor, you'll see the letter Q and then next to it the number 2. That tells us that the next cue the console will record if we, re if we press the cue record button is Q2. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll adjust some channel levels. Push the record button. And now we've recorded Q2. Now, what's the long method of doing that? Like, let's say we specifically wanted to record Q3 not using the shortcut method. Well, that's very simple. We're going to set up a new scene. We'll set channel uh, 12 at 0. Maybe this is going to be a blackout scene. We're going to say Q3 and record. So you certainly can use either method to enter Q numbers. Now, notice that we've been recording Qs in whole numbers. We started out with Q1, then Q2, and now Q3. You're not limited to just whole or integer number uh, Q numbers, you can actually use decimal point numbers. So, uh, whereas we've used 1, 2, and 3, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, etc., all the way up to 2.9 are valid Q numbers. Now, when I'm recording a show, I like to use whole numbers to uh, set up my show so that if I need to insert Qs or move Qs or change the playback, I have those decimal point Q numbers to uh, to interact with my show and insert cues in there. When you're playing back cues, cues always play back in numerical sequence order uh, regardless of which ones are there. So if we had a Q1, 2, and 3, and then the next Q in memory was Q10, Q10 is going to play back immediately after Q3. Now, note when we've recorded these cues, I haven't been talking too much about attributes. The console is designed to quickly allow you to get uh, cues recorded in there. And as I've been recording them, it's been inserting the default parameters or the default attribute values for my cues. Now those all can be defined through the menu. And uh, the menu option you use for that is called default timings. I can also enter cue attributes, however, on the fly. Let's go ahead and enter a new queue, and I'm just going to set all of my, my channels 1 through 12 here at full. I'm going to go ahead and say uh, channel 38 through 48 at full as well. This is now going to become my Q4. So we're going to use record for the shortcut to record Q4. 
But let's say instead of going in at my default timing of three, I want to make this a zero second cue, or rather an instantaneous cue. To do that, you simply press the options button. When you do that, you'll notice that the entire line of cue attributes displayed at the top of the monitor has now turned yellow, and my active field is the one that's orange, which right now is fade time. So I'm going to go ahead and hit zero, enter, and it's now going to set my fade time for this cue to zero seconds. Okay, so I've now recorded Q4 with channels 1 through 12 at full, as well as 38 through 48 at full, and it's going to play back at zero seconds. The console also has the ability to adjust cue attributes through a cue list. To access the cue list, double click the cue button. You'll see now here, you'll see the list of all of the cues I've recorded. In this show, I've recorded cues 1, 2, 3, and 4. The only attributes I've modified on the fly is Q4, where I assigned it as a, a zero second cue. Now, don't be too concerned. You'll notice I entered zero, however, recorded in memory as a 0 0.1 second fade time. The fastest cue fade time you can enter is a tenth of a second. For all intents and purposes, however, that will play back as a virtually zero second cue. The other ones have all been entered at three seconds. Let's say that this first one here, I want to enter at 10 seconds. The second one, I want to put at five. The third one, I want to be at 1.5 seconds. And the fourth one is going to be at one tenth of a second. So you'll see very quickly through the cue list, you can come in and tweak the timings of all of the cues you've recorded. You can either do it on the fly as you're recording cues through the options button, or you can do it interactively through the cue list. Uh, in either case, all changes take effect instantaneously. Do be warned, however, that when you're modifying options in the cue list, you don't have to re-record them and save them. As the change is made, that now becomes an active part of that memory. Now, when talking about cue timings, okay, we've talked about fade time. There are other parameters that you see in the cue list, and let me describe them to you briefly. The first one you see here is indicated in the menu bar as a T with an up arrow next to it. That indicates that this is the fade up time, or some people would call that the fade in time of, in this case, I'm on the row for Q1, so it's the fade up time of Q1. Next to that, I see a T with a down arrow. Okay? Currently, it's set at 10 seconds. Since I'm on Q1, this is a little bit difficult to understand, so I'm going to jump down here to Q2, or the second row down there. You can see that I've got a fade down time for Q2 of 5 seconds. This indicates that when Q2 is executed, the previous Q, or Q1, is going to fade out in 5 seconds. Well, with the Piccolo and the Piccolo Scan series of consoles, it supports what we call split fade times, or quite simply, a different fade in and fade out time, or fade up and fade down time, depending on the terminology you like to use. So let's say I want Q2 to fade up in 5 seconds, but I want Q1 to fade out in 10 seconds. Well, I can simply do that by just entering a 10 second time uh, in this field, and we've now put that in motion. To the right of the fade down time, we have our wait, or some folks would call it the, the delay time. Now this is the amount of time before the next cue in the sequence is automatically executed. You'll notice the infinity symbol there means that it's going to stay in that cue for an infinite length of time or forever, meaning that in order to advance to the next cue, you're going to have to press the go button. Now, for the case of Q2, instead of having an infinite time, I'm going to go ahead and say that I want it to sit in that Q for 20 seconds, then I want it to automatically move into Q3. To the right of that, we have our delay in and our delay out time. These parameters allow you to enter split delay times that indicate the amount of time between when you push the go button and the fade in or the fade out starts to occur. So what you can see is between the five parameters that we've talked about, the fade in, the fade out, 
the wait time, the delay in, and the delay out, you have a lot of control over how your cues play back when you're moving through the show. This allows you to very closely create some very tight and very orchestrated transitions to follow your actors through a scene and put the focus exactly where you need it, when you need it. The other parameters, timing presets, jumps, loops, uh, et cetera, we're going to cover when we start talking about automated devices and effects. Uh, the only other one I want to point out to you is this one right here where you see C, F, and then a diamond arrow shape. That is just infor for informational purposes only. When you see a C in that column, it indicates that channel levels are assigned to that Q. If you see an F in that column, it indicates that fixture values are assigned to the Q. And if you see the diamond shape in that column, it will tell you that a shape is assigned to that Q. And of course, you could also see any combination of the three. A C and an F would indicate that both channels and fixtures are in the Q. Uh, an F and a diamond would indicate that you have a shape and fixtures, or of course, C, F, and diamond as well. Uh, much like submasters, you also can label cues, and that's what the text field is for, is for entering some sort of label. Um, I happen to be on Q2 right now, so I'm just going to call um, Q2. I'm going to label it label because that's really quite a creative name. So we've labeled Q2 label, and we're going to see that in our playback screen. So how do we playback cues? Well, first, we're going to exit the cue list. We're going to lower all of our channel levels. I'm going to go ahead and double click the reset key, which will just clear all of the live levels that were set from the keypad. I'm going to assign Q1 over here to my auto faders. To do that, you press Q1, and then the assign button is what you use to interact with our auto faders or our auto cross fader pair. You'll see in the monitor you, all of our cue list and where we're at with the crossfaders is set here. You'll see I'm currently in Q0. That's the dark blue line. The brighter blue line is lit as Q1, which is going to be my next cue. To execute that cue, all you do is press the go button. I'm now executing my 10 second cue where fade, Q0 is fading out and Q10 is fading in. Now note on the monitors that anything playing back from my auto faders plays back in a blue color. We've now seen three colors on this console. We see blue for anything playing back from the auto fader, yellow for anything playing back from the masters, and red for anything playing back from the active scene or anything that's live in the editor. It's important to remember those colors because it helps you understand where your channel levels are coming from. You'll note in the channel display at this point in time I've got red, yellow, and blue things all in there at the same time because I've got all sorts of different playbacks active at the same time. I'm going to go ahead and clear my channels and my masters so I'm going back to the blues. So we're in Q1 which faded in in 10 seconds. We're about to execute Q2. Push the go button. Q2 is fading in in 5 seconds. The previous Q is fading out in 10 seconds. Now you'll note once this Q is finished, we're going to see my wait time starting to count down here. You'll see the numeric representation here and a graphical representation here. That's because we entered a 20 second wait time for Q2. So once that 20 seconds expires, it's going to automatically execute Q3, as it's doing now, which was one, one and a half second fade in and fade out. We're now in Q3, and it's going to stay there an infinite amount of time or until we press the go button, which will take us right into Q4. Now Q4 was a one-tenth of a second or a zero second fade, so it happened instantaneously. It's now looped us back to uh, Q0, which is really the default Q in the console, or my, some would call it my, my end of show Q or my pre-show Q, uh, and we've now completed this show. So I've showed you in this video how to record cues and playback cues. 
as well as how to enter some basic cue attributes. Now as we're moving through some of the more advanced recording techniques, we'll be using cues a lot, so it's something we're going to get uh, very comfortable with throughout uh, our training series. Thank you for joining us.